The following is a Thorpe TV production brought to you in cooperation with Jack Thorfinson. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Saturday Gun Chat. That relaxing time way up north near the Canadian border at Mr. Holster's Ranch where Mr. Holster chats about guns. Let's have a big rousing round of applause, because here he comes, Mr. Holster! <laughs> Putz. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Holster, that's me. Hi, Jack, you look good this morning. Howdy, Parge, yeah, it's me, Mr. Holster. And Jack, let's get the show started off right. And yeah, with my health concerns, <laughs> we're going to have something a little different today. A little, oh geez, I forgot to talk about popping the top on that one. Oh no, I'm going to have to give Machine Gun Kelly a refund on what he's paying for the plug. Let's pop the top on this one and pour a little into the old ranch beer glass. West Texas dust. <coughs> yeah, a little V8 juice won't hurt anybody. It's low sodium. It is lacking a little something though. We are going to kick it up a notch. Yeah, Mr. Holster. He can't live on, live, live on VHs, so we're going to give it a little extra something. A little Louisiana hot sauce. That's what we're going to do. May not be my usual drink, but we'll, we'll give a little something. Let's get this show on the road to the sunny slopes of long ago. Ah, that doesn't heat you up and cool you down all the same time. Got a lot of stuff I want to talk about this morning. And Jack, Jack, let me borrow his match champion. I'm afraid everything was going on. I sold it back to him. And I decided that, well, with his Vepper, him giving me his Vepper as a sacrificial lamb, I decided to sell the match champion back to Jack. Well, it was kind of an even, actually, I, I really kind of owe Jack money. You're, you're a sweetheart, though, Jack. Thanks for the help. And I got this out. I borrowed this from Jack this morning for a reason. Yesterday, Ruger announced it brought out a new match champion. Just like this. Six-round cylinder, 4.2-inch barrel, and stainless steel. It has, however, the adjustable sight that I don't like because they really rip up a sport coat. something awful. But... Same gun, same beautiful wood grip. Only difference is it uses moon clips and a 10 millimeter round. Yeah, they brought out a 10 millimeter match champion six shot cylinder by the use of moon clips. And Jack's, that's all Jack's been talking about ever since he heard that yesterday morning. Yeah, I know, Jack, but heck, about 357 Magnum's pretty good, Jack. I know, you wanted something awful. I just, I just don't see how it could possibly happen, Jack. Not unless you get into a good poker game and actually win for a change. <laughs> well, come on. It was just a joke. At any rate, I thought I'd mention that because I think that would be a fantastic gun. The big hang-up I've found on reloads on revolvers that slows you down is ejecting the rounds. Making sure, and if you got the gun set up right, that's really not a problem on the first couple strings, couple cylinders, but as it starts to get dirty, then it starts being a problem, and a lot of that disappears, you get enough weight, a lot of it disappears with gravity when you've got six entry, empty casings linked together. Uh, they come out a, a lot more reliably. That's what slows you down on a reload with a revolver, is emptying it. But to each his own, whatever grabs you, but I really do think in a 357 Magnum or a 10 millimeter, if you're talented on your reloads, you're not necessarily un undergunned. Which brings me to my next subject, is training and getting out there and training, regardless of your situation or your age, if you're short on funds and can't afford the ammo, then do dry fire training, just like you would go out and train 
with ammo. And back in the day when I carried, I talk about before carrying the carrying a 41 Magnum. That was for a particular purpose for somebody I worked with or for. And I went down to gun sites several times and and did a lot of tra training with that firearm. And it really came down to to getting good at the speed load and the reloading of that firearm. And there, there the important thing is, as with all firearms, shot placement. And again, practice, 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 because you're going to do in real life what you've practiced to do. So there you go. I wanted to talk about that, because even, even an old guy like me can, can still get out there and practice and be the best he can be. I may not be what I was when I was 30, but... I, I think I still can be a force to be reckoned with if I if I get out and work at it and practice. And of course, as I've always said in the past, pick your gun, learn how to shoot it, become one with that gun, and that's going to make a huge difference. And along with that, I still believe the old philosophy of shooting the gun the largest caliber sidearm you can shoot well and accurately but then again you have economic situations that really make it more viable to go with a nine millimeter nowadays just like in the old days a, a 38 because the 38 used to be so ex inexpensive compared to everything else now nine millimeter but nine millimeters become dramatically less expensive than everything else just because of the volume of people nowadays using it Thanks for tuning in, guys, from Mr. Holster and Jack. Till next time, thank you very much.